We're now going to look at the other theories of gearing. There are three of which we are going to look at, and it is purely a discursive element of the syllabus. The three theories that we're going to go through and look at, first of all, will be your pecking order theory. Second, we'll be looking at your static trade-off theory. And then thirdly, we'll be looking there at the impact of agency effects, so agency costs upon your capital structure. Now, when it comes to the exam, it could form a small part of an overall longer question, or it could go through and form a part of the written question that you get within the exam. I can't envisage it cropping up for all that many marks, because there isn't actually all that much that you can go through and say. But it could be used to add value to your otherwise excellent answer that you have provided within the exam. So, let's go through first of all and look at your pecking order theory. Pecking order theory is something that you may have touched upon previously when you went through and looked at F9. Whereby the idea behind your pecking order theory is that your shareholders are going to go through and use your director's actions to give them some information about the company. And when we say use the director's actions, we're talking there about buying or selling some shares. Why is that the case? Why would the director's actions cause shareholders to buy or sell shares? Well, it's because there that the directors have more information about how they perceive that the company is performing. If we think about what the pecking order actually is, then what a director will do is they will use retained earnings first. Why would they use retained earnings first? Well, that's because the use of retained earnings gives no signal at all to the shareholders. All the directors are doing is using their internal funds to go through and finance internal projects. So therefore, the shareholders won't buy or sell any particular number of their shares. We would then go through and have the directors using debt and then equity in terms of their pecking order. Again, debt being that bit cheaper than equity. So when the directors are considering debt, they will go through there and think about the level of tax relief that they get as they issue the debt and also go through there and consider the default risk. Now we'll talk in a moment about how the issue of debt can then go through and be used by your shareholders, but we're just at the moment bringing it in to the overall picture. When we look there at your equity, that's looking there at the issue of shares. And what directors tend to do is that they will go through and issue your equity at a high share price. Why? Well, the higher the share price, the less shares that we need to issue. The less shares that are issued will ultimately make the issue of shares that bit cheaper with respect to your issue costs. However, if the directors consider the share price to be low, then what will happen there is there will be no issue of shares. at a low price. So what will happen there is that instead the directors will go through and issue debt where they consider their tax relief and the level of default risk. Now why is that then important? Why will that then be used by the shareholders? Why will the shareholders use those directors actions there in terms of their shareholding? Well, if the directors issue shares when the share price is high, then the shareholders will then consider the company's shares to be overvalued. Now, if they are overvalued, then the shareholders will think, well, I can make some gains now if I went through and sold my shares. They are at a very high price based upon the director's actions. So they will make some nice gains. However, as more and more shareholders sell the shares, what happens ultimately to the share price? It then begins to fall. And as the share price begins to fall, 
we then get new shareholders coming on board. They have a different level of risk, different level of returns, could ultimately be high, which then pushes up your cost of equity, which will then have an impact on your weighted average cost of capital and your marginal investment decision-making processes. What we then need to go through and consider is that if the shareholders have issued debt based upon the level of default risk and the tax savings that they get, it could be there that as the share price is low, shareholders may believe that that the shares are undervalued. So if the shares are undervalued, the shareholders will go through and buy more and more shares and ultimately go through there and push that price higher and higher and higher. So that just goes through there and gives you an idea of what the pecking order is in terms of retained earning debt and equity, and also there about how the shareholders would then use that pecking order to go through and make decisions themselves about buying or selling shares. Static trade-off theory, very minor in comparison to what we've just seen there in terms of your pecking order theory, to the point whereby studies have been done and that it has been proved that it doesn't operate that much within the real world. But we'll spend a moment or two briefly mentioning it here. What we have, in effect, is it's bringing on board the Medigliani and Miller theories that we saw there in 1963, whereby they incorporated corporation tax. Remember, that gave rise there to a minimum weighted average cost of capital when we started to incorporate your bankruptcy risk and a minimum weighted average cost of capital gave you the maximum value of a business. Well, here, the idea behind your static trade-off theory is that firms within a static position, so in the absence of any serious levels of growth, they try to achieve a target level of gearing by adjusting their current level of gearing. So there, what they're trying to go through and do, in effect, is they're trying to work out what their optimum level of gearing would be. There's no growth, so they don't need to worry too much about what's happening there. We're in a fa fairly static position, so it should be relatively straightforward to go through and do. Why would they want to go through and do that? Well, if they have an increase in your gearing, that tends to go through there and give rise to tax savings. So that goes through there and starts to give you your benefits. But what you have there is that you then start to go through and as you increase the levels you have there, the costs to incur, which will be, as we've seen before in m and those bankruptcy risks and therefore the additional costs of borrowing that you incur. So what you have to do in terms of your static trade-off is that you need to go through there and balance the benefits with the costs. The last theory that we're going to look at there on capital structure is looking there at your agency effect and capital structure. Whereby if you think about your capital structure, as I'm sure you're all aware, hope so by now, is that your capital structure is made up of debt and equity. And what we're thinking about there is as we go through and increase the debt, we know that there is a risk of default. So therefore, if you have a risk of default, we're looking at the agency effects. Well, what then are the agency costs? Well, we've just mentioned that previously, that there is looking at your bankruptcy costs. The more debt you take on board, the higher the risk there of your bankruptcy. If you go through there and issue equity, then the agency effect there, the agency costs, is that you're going to have there an issue of new shares. So you will have there the agency costs will be the issue costs. And what you have to consider there specifically is looking at the new versus the old shareholders. Because the old shareholders are happy with the way that management are operating, otherwise they'd go through and sell the shares and invest elsewhere. The new shareholders, however, they don't know the management structure all that well. They don't have, if you like, yeah, that much knowledge about how this company operates and the directors and what they do. 
So the new shareholders will want in place, if you like, some form of implementation strategy or, if you like, implementation monitoring system to ensure that the directors are operating on their behalf. That's costly. So as well as having your issue costs, when you're thinking about a new issue of shares, there will be additional costs in terms of the monitoring of what the directors go through and do on behalf of the new shareholders. So how does this have an impact there with respect to your capital structure? You've got the agency cost there with your bankruptcy risk on your debt. You've got the agency cost there that you've got on issuing new shares. Well, it's very, very similar to what we mentioned before with your static trade-off theory. Well, there, the optimum structure is to balance off the benefits of your debt with the costs of your debt. So the costs of your debt are the bankruptcy risks. Yes, the benefits of debt are tax saving, but I wouldn't go along that thought process. I'd be thinking there, the benefits of the debt that the actual equity holders themselves go through and get. The benefits there are that the shareholders, i.e. the old shareholders, don't have to incur the costs of those monitoring systems for those new shareholders.